She's giving Stephen a haircut. Oi. Right then, hello there, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, welcome one and all, whatever time of day it happens to be, wherever you happen to be at. My name is Paul, I'm also called Nick it's Saturday the 26th of February and last night saw me watching an episode of Doctor Who. Just to give you a quick uh, brief summary, I'm better known for Nick Daily Teasers, You've probably seen a few of those float past on YouTube over the past few years, but I'll have links to them and my other TV reviews and other movie reviews in this corner here, tucked away underneath the eye. Go feel free to float around and have a look at those. I'll try and throw in some link to my nephew's stuff as well. He's uh, into gaming videos, so you'll see lots of Rocket League. Uh, at any rate, I'm a Doctor Who fan. I occasionally sit down with the various releases. And last night saw me watching episode one of the William recently reconstructed William Hartnell story, Galaxy 4. I saw episode one, 400 duels, and I'm going to tell you what I thought about it. <laughs> episode one, 400 duels, opens in the TARDIS and shows us the Doctor, William Hartnell, at the controls as the ship lands on a new and unnamed world. In another corner of the control room, Vicky, Maureen O'Brien, is giving the companion Stephen, Peter Purvis, a haircut. Moving rapidly on here, once the ship is safely down on this unnamed world, the Doctor activates the scanner to show Vicky and Stephen a planet that seems to have no inhabitants, until the team realise there's a a small robot, a robot that Vicky immediately dubs a Chumbly, exploring the outside of the TARDIS. It's a robot that seems very keen to take the Doctor, Vicky and Stephen to meet its unknown owners. Whilst it's taking them there, we find there's two groups on the unnamed world. The Chumbly's owners are one, the beings that disabled it are another. The two people from this latter group are a pair of dravins, both tall, both blonde, both apparently female, and equally as keen to get the Doctor and company speaking to their leader. That dravin leader is a woman called Marga, played by Stephanie Bidmead, who tells the Doctor and company that their ship has been shot down over the planet by a ship owned by a species called the Rills. And there is little that they can do, the dravins can do, to repair their own ship. Their only hope of getting off the planet is by capturing the Will Rill ship within two weeks. Which is when, according to the Rills, the planet's going to be destroyed. Now, what do I think so far? What do I make of all this? How come I'm watching what I refer to as a reconstruction? Hmm? Yeah, mm -hmm. Sorry, brief William Harlow impression there, hang on. Just to give you a quick bit of background, as you may or may not know, many of the 60s era Doctor Who episodes are, are missing, the Patrick Trout and William Harlow ones from those first two Doctors. Things like Power of the Daleks, Fury from the Deep, and Evil of the Daleks uh, have been completely reconstructed. The BBC has access to fan recordings made at the time of those episodes, and they've made animated versions of the episodes built on those, those audio files. Other stories, The Web of Fear, The Reign of Terror, Tenth Planet, are partially complete. Some of the episodes are missing, and they've released versions of those, of those missing episodes reanimated. Galaxy 4 is one of the latter episodes, it's partially complete episodes. There's only one episode. I'd say partially complete, but there is literally only one surviving episode of the original series left. Um, so what the animators have done, and I feel it's a new company that's animated this series, but what the animators have done is they've completely animated the whole series. They've made animated versions of all four episodes. Um, and what they've done is, is they've like I say, they've animated everything, um, but they've released black and white versions of the animations, colour versions of the animations, just like some of the, the Patrick Tratton recent Patrick Tratton reconstructed stories. They've also done 
telesnap reconstruction of the missing episodes, in this case the missing first, second and fourth episodes. The version of episode one that I watched was the colour animated version, and I'm going to be watching the rest of the episodes in colour, or the animated versions in colour, over the next few weeks. I will possibly catch the surviving black and white episode three another time. I'm going to watch all four episodes in colour as animations. This particular first episode, uh, 400 Dawns, is an interesting watch. Um, I don't know how close the set, the unnamed planet, is to the actual original TV studio set, but it's a nice strong colour scheme in there. Uh, you can see how everything is laid out. It's it's nice to watch. Um, O'Brien and Purvis, uh, playing Vicky and Stephen, they do their parts well and they they interact well with the rest of the cast. They're professionals, of course they are. They're doing well at it. Um, the drawings are as big a bunch of mildly comedic neo-Nazi Amazons as a body could hope to watch. They literally are. You could, there's one scene where the leader, Marga, is ticking off the three driving troopers, and it's you're quite... I got thinking, well, hang on, it wouldn't be nastier if it was literally a bunch of German Nazis in a, a World War II film. In all fairness, I think while they're not referred to as clones, I don't think the concept had much traction until the 1970s. You can see Galaxy 4 is the first time the idea was used in Doctor Who, and it's new territory. So it's, it's, it's clone troopers. It's, it's, it's a new idea to the, the TV show, to the writers. They do do rather well, I think. They're well performed. It's, it's new territory, and it's quite funny. It's mildly funny. If you stick your tongue heavily ironically into your cheek, um, the TARDIS is actually quite amazing looking in this episode. I mentioned in my reviews, look them up, of Evil of the Daleks, and how I found the, the, the detailing on the Daleks quite ravishing to see how the eyes moved in and out, the eye stalk, the pupil of the eye moved in and out. It was wonderful to watch. The grill work was wrong. The Daleks obviously aren't in their story. So the detailing I saw on them in Evil of the Daleks is instead seems to show up on the TARDIS, the actual surface, the paintwork. It's a static piece in this cartoon, but the actual paint looks mottled and bits look like it's peeling off. It's the TARDIS done in the same sort of detail as the Daleks were in The Evil of the Daleks. It's quite, it, it's fascinating to look at, it really is. Um, phew! It's really something to watch. It looked battered, I loved it. William Hartnell, William Hartnell, I get from the little I know, was not necessarily a well man at this point. He had the condition called arteriosclerosis, I think it's pronounced. It meant the veins, especially in his head, were slowly narrowing and affecting his memory. He seemed better than he did in The Three Doctors, where he was notably very ill. Um, so his performance is interesting. I think it's a good, it's actually. Considering he wasn't well, and considering that this was, at the time, they were doing sort of six to nine months of every year was made up of Doctor Who stories, um, his performance is something to watch. Saying that, and with many of his seasons missing, I've not sat down and concentrated on watching as much of his Doctor as I'd like to see. I should maybe go back and watch some of his earlier stuff in some sort of order and present it to you. We'll have to see what happens there. But seeing that one episode last night, seeing that first episode last night, 
and planning and watching the next three over the next few weeks should correct that. I should see a bit more of his performance. I don't know if 400 Dawns is as stunning as an episode as it could be, but it's one I'm definitely happy to have seen, and it's one that means I'm going to be looking forward to the next episode with a certain amount of anticipation. I want to see more of this story. I want to see some more of Harlow. It's not something I've covered as much as I could do. At any rate, it's Saturday the 26th. I'm going to close off this video. Feel free to watch it as many times as you want. Please feel free to like, dislike, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because that'll let you know when I see episode two. That'll be next week. I'll see you then. Have a very good week. Let's <laughs> go.